All right, hi everybody, it's Jackie Clark here for Flying Unicorn. Tonight we are going to do a project loaded with color. Um, Escape Kitty had posted a, a question of the week a couple months, or sorry, a couple weeks ago about what really scares you. And a lot of people responded that color really scares them. For me, negative space scares me, but uh, color is something that I can't do without. I cannot do a layout without at least adding in some pop of color that's going to draw your attention. So I am going to work with some gorgeous colorful papers tonight and uh, in the meantime I just want to get a couple of announcements out of the way. Clearly you know about uh, the Flying Unicorn Ustream channel because you're here but for those of you who are watching this if it's recorded you can tune in every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, spend some time with one of us learning how to do one of the projects that we've put together. And uh, if you happen to miss a date, of course, you can watch it pre-recorded on our Ustream channel. Next week's U Ustream Educator is going to be Song, so I hope you will join us to see what she is creating. And all week long, the products that I'm using are going to be featured on sale in the Flying Unicorn store. If you are on any page in the store, at the top, there's a menu bar, and where it says Ustream Specials, that's where you can find uh, the supplies. I have used lots and lots of supplies tonight, so hopefully um, you will be able to pick up quite a bit of, quite a bit of stuff that you uh, may not have and may want to get your hands on. So I am going to try to switch from one camera to the other here and hope that everything doesn't fall apart and just readjust my lighting and we will be ready to go. After uh, having our Southern girls for a couple of weeks, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little bit of culture shock. I talk very fast. I apologize. I will try not to. If you're having problems uh, translating, Jen has met me before, she can hopefully do it. If Shona is here, Shona can definitely translate what I'm saying. Uh, but if you absolutely can't understand me, please do let one of the girls know and they can always send me a message and I will uh, try to slow myself down. I like to say I talk fast and I scrap slow. And uh, so tonight I'm going to work on scrapping fast and uh, probably talking fast as well. So this is the layout we're going to do tonight. It's featuring uh, the gorgeous Santoro papers, uh, which are all gorgeous actually, and uh, these papers just have amazing color in them. Before we start on the layout, I just want to show you the packaging because I could not believe this when my package arrived in the mail. So here's how you get the package. 32 sheets of paper, 16 patterns, you get two copies of each one and you see the beautiful image on the front. Um, I've been trying to figure out what it is about these images that speaks to me and uh, what I figured out is I grew up in the 80s and this is how my sister and I used to dress and how we used to look. We used to have our hair kind of done up but scraggly looking and uh, we used to wear cute little dresses like this so it reminds me of my childhood. So we flip to the back you can see all the different sheets you get, but you also have this adorable image that you can, can fussy cut to use on another project. But just wait and see what happens when you open it up. Can you see that on the inside? Every square inch of this packaging is jam-packed with little fussy cuttable elements that you can use on your projects. And I tell you, I was hard pressed not to just cut this to shreds to use up. Um, before I got the chance to show you guys, but it is the most amazing use of packaging I have ever seen and uh, You know that periodically we all have challenges where we want you to use packaging Well, it's absolutely no problem to use packaging when you've got something this gorgeous available to you. So I wanted to show you that and uh, I know that uh, the Santoro the different elements they have also have amazing packaging because we had some buttons in a kit a couple months ago and I think I used every single scrap of that packaging on different projects. So here are the papers that you get in the kit. You get some beautiful dark reds with nice shading. 
uh, stripes, some damask. You get some papers that have the beautiful little girls already colored in for you. This amazing die cutting sheet that I'm going to use tonight. And just lots of beautiful, brilliant, deep color. So lots of different uses for these papers, but I'm pretty much going to hold myself to reds and blues and neutrals today. So let me just put aside the papers I'm not going to use. And if you're looking for the Santoro products in the store, they're under Do Craft, so D-O Craft. And then they have these beautiful stamps. I love my Julie Nutting stamps, and so when I saw these, I just had to get my hands on them. Uh, and I was originally planning on doing some cards with you all, but I thought that I would spend most of the broadcast coloring, and you probably don't want to watch that for an hour. So I changed uh, courses midstream. I do have a card that I can show you at the end, but in the meantime, I'm gonna work on a layout, and if you can hear that crazy barking dog, I apologize. So here's the layout. With all of my layouts, when I know I'm gonna do some mixed media work, I always start by adding clear gesso. And as you can see, you can't really see the clear gesso, but you can hear it because it really adds, there I scratched a bit, so now you can see it. It really adds uh, some tooth to the page. So it allows um, your different media to stay on top of the page rather than sinking in. And now I'm going to play with the focus. The silly self-focusing. Well, I'm going to plug on and hope it comes back. So I start by putting on clear gesso. I don't know how much it actually made a difference on this layout because I didn't end up using a lot of really wet media, but I am going to slap some on just in case. I'm a little bit concerned with uh, the white dots that if I don't put on some gesso that they're going to sink in and uh, we will get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red background paper and I am just going to take off a half inch on two sides. So basically a quarter inch on all four sides. Put those aside for another project. We're not going to use them tonight. And then grab some clear gesso. And this stuff probably would be my number one favorite mixed media product because it makes it so that I don't ruin my layout midway through. I don't know about most of you guys. I tend to add a lot of mixed media at the end. And so uh, I'm always concerned that things are going to go wrong. And quite often I will take before and after pictures just in case things go wrong at the mixed media stage. I haven't lost everything. I still have something to show for all my efforts. So this allows it to be a little bit more foolproof and uh, for me to be fairly certain that I'm going to be able to wipe away whatever mistakes I might make. So I'm putting on probably more than you need. You just need a really thin coating, but like I said, I'm usually a very slow scrapper. Tonight I'm going to do it faster, so things will not be as precise. All right, let me just rub that out a little bit. So I'm also a very hands-on scrapper, and uh, all this probably cringing in the background, but I will just use my hands for most things and a handy wet wipe to clean things up rather than worrying about pulling out more tools. All right. So I'll just stick some of that back in the jar. Waste not, want not. And we're done with the gesso. So I'm going to do this uh, in a little bit of a different order than I did when I was designing the page, only because I'm hoping to give the media some time to dry on their own without having to resort to using the heat gun 
all of the time. I'm hoping to just be able to touch up with the heat gun at the end. So we will put that aside for a second to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on my little stamp. So when I am stamping my images, I have found that if I stamp them and try and color them right away, the colors tend to bleed. So you have to stamp them ahead of time. But, I'll just, oh, there she is. So I've stamped one ahead of time. I've actually cheated. I've colored one ahead of time in case we run out of time. But I will go through the coloring with you guys in a sec. All right, so I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black. It's my go-to ink uh, when I'm going to possibly be getting things wet and I don't want, want uh, the image to run. And I am just using uh, watercolor paper for this. The type I have is cold press, and so it is textured on one side and it is slick on the other side. And I tend to like stamping on my rough side and uh, having a little bit of texture to play with. As you can see, I didn't press so well on her leg and I did not get a really good image, but fortunately I stamped her ahead of time and I have a really nice crisp image on that side. So for stamping, I haven't had a chance yet to try out the Julie Nutting blocks that Jen is raving about. Um, and so I have a big shot and when my husband bought it for me, the woman advised him that he should get me a second set of plates, which I have never used for the big shot, but which I use for stamping because it gives me a big clear surface and uh, I don't have to worry about trying to stamp and uh, losing part of the image. All right, so on our image, I am using the Faber-Castell watercolor uh, pencil crayons, colored pencils if you're in the US. And I absolutely love these. I had seen people do layouts and cards using pencil crayons before and I always got so frustrated because the leads in mine broke. Well, the leads in the Faber-Castell ones are guaranteed not to break and true to form, I have never had one break on me yet. Uh, just watch if it's going to happen. It'll probably happen while I'm doing this broadcast, but they are absolutely amazing. I had a chance to try these out at uh, a class and absolutely fell in love with them. Could not wait until we got them into the store. So I have all of them at this point. And the beauty of them is that you can choose whether to just leave them as a colored pencil drawing or whether you want to add water and use them as a watercolor. And once you add water and they dry, they are fixed. So you can color over them with a different color and it is not going to run. So I'm just gonna color her a little bit and then we will move on to the next step. As I mentioned, I've got one that I colored ahead of time. Can you hear my silly dog in the background? All right, so I've put down the base layer for her. They come with their own fine point paintbrush, which is fantastic. And so I can just go in now and wet it and move the color around so that I have more shading in some areas and less shading in others. And I end up having a more finished look than if I just used a colored pencil. So, you don't get a lot of light there, but can you see it just turns into watercolor paint? And it's really nice because a couple of the sets come with metallic uh, pencils. So, this one's a gold one, really perfect for doing her hair. And I don't spend a lot of time worrying too much about the lines because I'm going to fussy cut around her and so. It doesn't matter if I end up outside the lines. If I end up going across her face, it's going to matter a little bit more. But again, you're probably only going to see it if you're really looking closely. Uh, on my example piece, 
I ended up, I think it was possibly after I photographed it, but it may not have been, I ended up getting yellow mist uh, across the girl and you can't really tell unless you're looking closely. And I think we're all our biggest critics and other people don't spend as much time looking over every single minute detail as we do. So I'm just giving her a quick coat here with the base color for her hair and then I'll add in some shading. And I could blend her hair as well with water if I wanted to. I tend to not on the hair. I like it to have a little bit of a chunk here, uh, more defined appearance. But if you like things blended together, by all means, you could, could do that. And the beautiful thing about hair is you don't have to be that picky about it. So adding in a little bit more depth. All right, so I will leave off there with her. You don't need to watch me color the entire thing. Uh, the one I colored before, there we go. I put a little shading on her cheeks, colored in her clothing, and uh, sorry, there's for matte paper, it's getting a lot of glare off. So there you go. She's colored. We'll call it done. All right, so for the next step, we are just going to add, my background's dry enough, we are just going to add some stamping to the background and I am using a Prima Finibera stamp and a Faber-Castell Stamper's Big Brush Pen. If you have not used a Stamper's Big Brush Pen in the past and you are thinking why do I need another form of ink, the reason is is that it allows you to control where on the stamp you want to have your ink, which is brilliant. I used to go in and use a wet wipe to take ink off my stamp where I didn't want it. Well, now I can just go in and put the ink where I want it to start with and Bob's your uncle. I don't have to worry about anything else. And if I end up with a little bit of shadow from where I have already stamped and there's a little bit of ink, of ink left on the stamp. I am not worried about that at all because most of this is going to end up getting covered up. At the end of the day, it's just giving me a little bit more detail in the background. And these come in many, many different colors. As you can see, I'm really not worrying about how it looks. And since I already know where my images are going to go or where my clusters are going to go, I'm not worrying too much about stamping in those areas. I'm just hitting the parts that I know are going to show up. All right, so there we go. That's stuff. Oh, actually, I'm gonna add just a little bit. There, now that's done. And I just give my stamps a quick wipe with a wipe, wet wipe, and I am done with them. All right, so the next thing we're going to go on to is adding some masking. So if you picked up uh, the mixed art kit last month, there was this uh, golden mediums set, trial medium set. And uh, last I checked on the weekend, there were still a couple left in the store, so you might get lucky. And they have six different types of media in them. Today I'm going to use the coarse pumice gel. And the nice thing, about mediums is you are not restricted to only using the black or the 
the base color. You can combine them with other media. Now if you combine them with sprays or other liquid media, what you're going to find is you're going to get um, a compound that's a lot runnier, which is not great when you're stenciling. So uh, you can use primary elements, which we have in the store, which are absolutely fantastic. And tonight I'm going to use some of the uh, Perlex we got in a previous kit because I want it to be gray and I don't have a primary element that's gray. But either one of those pigments are going to work really great for creating a custom color that has a nice deep color without making your compound runny. So I just start by scooping some of it out onto my mat and then I'm going to add in a little bit of the Perlex. And you'd be amazed, a little will do it. You don't need a whole, a whole bunch. So that might even be too much, but gray is gray. I don't mind if it's a little bit too dark. So as you can hear, the coarse pump still very crunchy, which is great because I want uh, it to have a rock wall look. It looks to me like this girl could be easily sitting on a wall, so a wall she shall have. And again with this, I am not going to be super precise. I know that I don't want to get the ivy in, but uh, aside from that, is that better with the lighting? Um, aside from that, I am going to just kind of put it on the lower half of the page. And with this stuff, because it is so thick, you can really get away with moving it around on the stencil a lot more than you can with some other media. Um, and really, you're going to cover some of it up. So if a part of it looks absolutely horrid, you can cover it up afterwards. It's not the end of the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a ton of time worrying about your stenciling. The one thing I could not find when I was setting up for class tonight was a pan that would be big enough to clean my big stencils in, and I would worry about this drawing on my stencil, so you're going to have to bear with me as I give it a little wet white bath at the end, because there's nothing worse than wrecking your stencil and not being able to get a new one. This one is still in the store. It's the Prima Stonewall one, but... Uh, Prima tends to release their stencils once and uh, you get them or they're gone. So I try and really baby the stencils that I have. So to make cleanup easier, I'm just going to scrape as much as I can through the stencil. And as you can see, it's not perfect. That is absolutely all right. I'm not concerned. And away we go. All right. I don't know if anybody else knows, I always wonder um, when I'm cleaning my stencils or my paintbrushes in the sink, if I'm actually supposed to do that or if it's going to gum, gum up my plumbing work. So this may even be a better way to clean your stencils. I am not sure. Good thing we have a Costco nearby because I go by, go through wet wipes by the case. And uh, I mean, it's handy anyways. We call it our corner store around here because we have, have three boys. So um, if it weren't for Costco, we would be in big trouble. All right, so that's clean enough. It'll do for now. You're also not getting treated to uh, my normal scrappy workspace. I know uh, Cynthia posted a picture of her desk on Facebook yesterday and challenged everybody else to post theirs. Uh, mine would usually be a mountain of product by this point because I'm pulling in different things, wondering what I'm going to use, and uh, then everything just ends up in a mountain on my desk. But for tonight, I am tossing things in the box behind me uh, when they're done, and so you get a nice clean workspace, which is not typical at all. All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick, quick heat set and then we will move on to our next step. Okay. 
while we're doing this, I will have a look down at the chat. Ooh, something's getting drizzled like icing. I love the pumice gel a lot too, Carrie. Um, there's, yeah, I'm, I'm really one for media. I have a ridiculous number of mists and paints and probably more than I can use in my lifetime, but I just cannot resist them when new ones come out. And uh, same thing for media. So when this stuff dries, it has an amazing coarse raised texture. Texture. I don't think you can really see. No, nope, there's no light there. I don't know if you can really see how raised it is, but it is nice and chunky and rough. And when you rub it, it doesn't fall apart, which is fantastic. The shimmers textures work the same way. I absolutely love them. And uh, I hope they keep coming out with more colors because I cannot get enough of those. Or the Dazzlers either, which I'm going to be using in a minute. All right, so we're on our way to being dry here. It really doesn't take much. And I'm not too concerned about my paper warping because I'm going to mount this at the end in any case. And so I can flatten it out then. Oh, my chat's not scrolling. I'm way behind what you guys are talking about. We can't go keep golden in. No, that's because the CT buys it all. <sighs> all right. Close enough. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I was talking about Dazzlers. We are going to add some Dazzlers. I love this stuff. If uh, I could, I would eat it. It looks absolutely delicious. I don't know if you can see um, the color. This was another one of those things that came into the store and kept selling out. And I had the email me notification on and I would get an email at work saying, hey, the gummy berry blue is back in stock. And by the time I got home, it would no longer be in stock because somebody had stolen it right from my cart. So um, I have it now. I'm very happy about that, but uh, it is absolutely delicious. And if you love color, it's wonderful. Um, I'll tell you now, I could tell you later, but I'll tell you now. When you put it on, when you're mixing colors, if you're nervous of colors, you want to try and stay to the same intensity level. So you don't want to mix a really dark, rich red with a really light blue. The Gummy Berry Blue, it is a little bit light for this. I knew that going in and I had a plan to deal with it. Uh, but if you're new to color mixing and you are wondering uh, how to do it, you really want to try and stay within the same intensity. So if you do not have a color wheel, it is an invaluable tool. I use mine all the time. And so you can see if you're using a nice dark red, and you're using blue with it, you want to use a real nice blue. Um, I love this color wheel because it makes it easy for me. I tell it I want my key color is going to be red. What should I use with it? And it says if you're going to use the opposite, use green. But if you are going to use three colors, then you're going to use blue and yellow. So you know you have predominantly red. I'm In this case, I'm going to do a lot of blue and then I'm going to do just a little splash of yellow as an accent. And uh, before I put my fun color wheel away, I did not realize this until somebody pointed it out to me, so I apologize if you know, but uh, with misting and whatnot, when you are worried about making brown and things looking muddy, the way you get brown is if you mix opposite colors, complementary colors. So if you mix red and green together, you get brown. If you mix violet and yellow together, brown. If you mix brown and orange together, you get brown. So if you stay away from those combinations and you mix red with green, you're good. If you mix red with yellow, you're good. If you mix red with, um, sorry, if you mix red with blue, there's my red. If you red, mix red with blue, you're good. Blue with, red with yellow, you're good. Red with green, you're not good. Um, you can pretty much 
mix it with anything else over on this side as long as you stay away from your greens. And that makes mixed media a lot less terrifying when you know I can use lots of color and I am not going to get brown at the end of the day. All right, so I am just going to add the Dazzlers. Now this is a thinner media and so you want to only apply one way. And if you're going back and forth over a spot, like I did there a little bit and I might end up with a problem, you are going to end up having a little bit of seepage. Again, nobody looks as critically at your work as you do and probably nobody is going to notice or you can cover it up but if you are a stickler for you know everything being absolutely perfect going back and forth over your stencils is going to cause you grief with your thinner media all right i am not worrying about where i've stamped because i want to have a layered effect and so if my Masking partially occludes some of my stamping. I am absolutely okay with that. This is one of my absolute favorite stencils. It's uh, the Prima Bubble Stencil and I use it all the time. All right, so I'm just gonna slather this stuff on. And you know, the, the, no, there's no point crying over spilled milk. Well, I moved my stencil there. There's really no point in being up in arms about it because there's nothing I can do to change that. So hopefully everything goes all right. All right. So there we go. It looks okay. There's a couple little places where it's smudged. And I'm okay with that. And I'm just going to set that aside for a sec. And I'm going to clean my stencil. There's some people that do not mind having a dirty stencil. And as long as you don't care whether or not the edges of your image are crisp, it's absolutely fine. Uh, I've used, I've been to some classes and I've used uh, the instructor's stencils and they're coated with beeswax and everything else. And they have a really great texture and they work and everything else, but I just cannot bring myself to do that with my own stencils. Um, so I've got to clean them off right away. So this is a technique that I discovered quite by accident, but if you were to put this on a blank piece of paper, I'll just grab a blank piece of paper, and you are going to rub off, that's not a blank piece of paper, you're going to rub off your media anyway with a wet wipe. So if I put it on a blank piece of paper and I rub it, I get the outlines of the bubbles rather than getting the bubbles filled in. So you can get a really very cool effect. You can see it here all over my craft mat as well um, of, of having the outline of the bubbles rather than having the bubbles themselves. So it's just a, a cool way to use your masks. If you have another project in mind that you think, hey, I'd really like to have the outline of that stencil now you know how. My poor, my poor craft mat has seen better days. But it does the trick and the nice thing about having a glass tabletop is that it is very forgiving. I can paint on it, I can do, I can heat set on it whatever the case may be, and it is very easy to clean up, so I'm not that worried. Funny story though, um, you can see I'm missing a corner on my craft mat and I have a slice through it. I left it out once when my oldest son was five and uh, I came back and he had cut a hole in it and I said to him, Elliot, you know better than to, to play with my stuff and to do that. And he looked at me and he said, mommy, you know better to leave your, than to leave your scrapbooking scissors where we can get it. So. He told me, and uh, to this day, I still use the same same beaten up craft mat. And it is a reminder to me every night to put my scissors up where little hands cannot reach them. All right. So the next step, 
because we are working on a schedule, I would normally now set my layout aside and stare at the TV waiting for inspiration to come while things dry, but uh, moving it right along, we are going to work on our circles here. And uh, there are a couple circles here from the die cut sheet that I'm going to cut out and then I'm going to make my own. And I love circles on layouts. I think they're such a striking way to mount things and uh, partly because they're not done a lot of the time and so um, it feels fresh and new every time. Sorry, I've just got to find my die cut sheet here. So from the die cut sheet, I am using, and you'll be happy to know I've pre-cut most of these so you don't have to watch me fussy cut and listen to me talk while I fussy cut. Um, I used four of the photo corners. I used a whole bunch of these cute little tiny flowers. I don't know if you can see those. I have to kind of adjust the light in here. So these cute little flowers uh, and the two circles. So you'll just have to bear with me while I cut out the circles. I like uh, when my papers have some element in them that uh, kind of gets my creative juices flowing and I think, okay, yes, I can build on that. And uh, so this was one of the elements for this project. And the other is that, and I don't know if you can see it because I've probably covered most of them up, but this red paper to start with, you can see, I don't know if you can or not, I can see, there's a little bit of shading of gray circles in different areas. And that's kind of what got me going on the circle motif. So love when when the papers kind of give me that first creative spark and then I find it just flows from there. Uh, there's nothing like sitting and staring at a blank piece of paper and wondering what you're going to do with it. So I find at least if I can get moving, things tend to happen. It's when I just sit there and stare that I find other things to do like cleaning my desk, reorganizing my supplies, um, shopping for more stuff and uh, so got to embrace got to embrace those moments when when inspiration strikes and again you can be really fussy with this if you want and do an absolutely perfect job but I'm going to cover up at least half of each of these circles and so I am not going to be that worried if they're not perfectly circular or even if I end up lobbing part of it off. As long as I don't lob off my finger. Uh, I think it was one of Jen's first Ustream broadcasts. She mentioned uh, burning herself so severely with her glue gun that she ended up needing to go to emergency. And ever since then, I've been terrified that that would be how my first Ustream experience would end. So uh, I'm trying my best not to use the glue gun. I'll use it at the very end, but I thought if I have it on the whole time, I'm going to be in trouble. So I wanted to echo these circles. And so I took, and I keep putting my fingers in the wet paint on that one, so I will move it out of the way. I took this gorgeous paper here with the girl on it because I could not think of how I would use her in a scrapbook page. But in the meantime, I loved the background paper. And I also took this uh, yellowy damask paper to recreate the gold part of the circles and the brown part of the circles. And uh, for those of you who've been crafting a long, long time, how did I get my circles? I have my good old creative memories from way back in the day circle cutting system and uh, a couple creative memories my things looking dull oh, okay, there we go a couple of the creative memories uh, circle punches so easy peasy nothing fancy when I want to cut big circles believe it or not I trace my dishes or cups so I have pre-cut a lot of these so again you do not have to watch me cut a billion circles but I will do one of the big ones 
just to show you what I did. It's not rocket science. So I want to have graduated circles. They are not going to have this perfect little gold band that these ones do. They're going to have quite a noticeable gold band, but I'm okay with that. So they are graduated circles. And I'm going to start with doing my biggest one out of the brown. Has anybody fessed up to, oh, there we go, Barbara. She has the old uh, creative memories. Cindy's laughing at me. I tell you, everything in scrapbooking um, you hang on to because, man, just when you think it's out of fashion and it's never coming back, that's when it is the new hot trend. Like uh, glitter right now and mica flakes, I have an enormous drawer full of glitter and I am so happy to see it coming back because when I think of how much I have invested in glitter, the idea of never using it again or of getting rid of it is quite frightening. Um, that being said, I don't quite know that uh, the little cardstock corners and stickers that I was using in my creative memories days are ever going to make a comeback, but pretty much everything else I've held on to because you never know. So this is just the watercolor paper that uh, I used for my stamped image. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, there is mist splatter all over it because I am not a careful mister at all and uh, I get in quite a bit of trouble in our household because there is always mist on people's mail, there's mist on clothes, there's mist on the computer, there's mist on the keyboard, and uh, the absolute worst was I misted the keyboard once with, um, oh, what's it called? The textured, goosebumps, the textured mist. And so our keyboard had raised misting all over it, which uh, of course really gums up the keys as well. So now that some of the keys are sticking, I'm just really happy that my husband Evan has not cottoned on to the fact that, oh yeah, remember that time that Jackie sprayed that really sticky textural mist on the computer? Maybe that was the root of the problem. My distress inks, they are my tried, tested and true friends. Uh, I love them. Love them, love them, love them. And uh, it's just a great way to be able to add in some controlled color. I am not worrying about how light or dark this is. Um, I just don't want it to be stark white. As you can see from the die cut ones, there's some texture in there and uh, that's kind of what I'm looking to recreate. So I'm using weathered wood, which is just a nice blue gray color. And then to give it a little bit of definition around the edges, I'm going to use some black soot. And just slap it on there. If you're wanting stark white, it's great. I didn't want a lot of stark white on this layout. So now I'm going to assemble my circles and I'm going to use uh, the 13 Arts Gel Medium. This stuff is such a stinking good deal, I cannot believe it. This whole big tube, I think it's $3.75 in the store. And of course, it is, um, it's on sale this week under the Ustream special. So be sure to get some. I'm going to be stocking up on more. I'm reading through the chat about um, splatters on the screen. And uh, we actually figured out that if you spill red wine on a laptop keyboard, it actually goes up inside the screen. So when I'm trying to edit photos, um, everything has red blobs on it, which is really not good. I am just thrilled that although it was not that although it was my red wine, I was not the person to spill it. So Evan can Evan can take the blame for that one. I like my circles slightly off kilter. And uh, again, it comes down to personal preference. If you like your circles absolutely dead center, um, have at her. I am, with these ones, with the bigger ones, I did them pretty close to centered, but with the smaller ones, I like them 
uh, slightly off kilter. And uh, the nice thing with the gel medium, you can get it everywhere and it is going to dry clear and you are not going to be able to tell. Unless you have that layout right up to your face and you are looking for where uh, you made the mistake, you are not going to be able to tell that there is runover of your gel medium. And again, uh, all the look away, I'm using my fingers. I, for all that I take good care of my stencils and relatively good care of my stamps, I take awful care of my paintbrushes. And uh, once I'm done using them, I throw them into my trusty little water thing here and they will sit there until I no longer have any paintbrushes left. And then I will rinse them all. But uh, I take awful, awful care of my paintbrushes. So I worry that if I use a paintbrush to apply gel medium, that is going to be the end of my supply of paintbrushes because they are all going to be gummed together. So um, I'm used to picking copious amounts of what looks like dirty dead skin off myself for letting gel medium dry on my hands. And uh, I'm okay with that. I work with dogs. I mean, really, if I have gel medium on my hands, it's the least of my concern. So just throw these together. I could have glued some of them together ahead of time. That would have saved time. But uh, just be happy. You don't have to watch me cut them and assemble them. Just assemble them. And now my hands are so mucky, I can't scroll down through the chat to see what you guys are talking about. See, Alda has to be happy though, because at least I am wearing pink today. Not only pink, I'm wearing pink and pink lipstick, which is unheard of. So despite the fact that I'm being super messy, I'm representing in, in Alda's colors. Shona did a dog pull it out. Oh, I thought it was Alda texting me to tell me to wash my hands, but uh, it's not. It's something about puppies at work. So uh, this is not common knowledge. There is a standing bet or standing challenge to the Flying Unicorn creative team that if any of us is willing to twerk on video that uh, we will get to know all of the kit contents until the, until the end of the year. So um, I'm not promising anything, but hey, if we wrap up early tonight, my girlfriends and I YouTubed a couple videos so uh, we could practice it. And so maybe I will treat you guys and in return get to know all of the kit contents for the year, which I would then have to share with poor Michelle because uh, being all the way on the other side of the world, she has to wait just slightly longer than Sean and I to get our packages, but long enough that uh, she's usually, usually the last person to know. All right, so I'm just finishing up the last one. Now these do not need a lot of tender loving care while they dry. I kind of reach over from time to time and thump on them just to make sure uh, they are sitting fairly flat. Um, but for the most part, they are good to go. And I don't know if you use a lot of glue, hot glue. I used to use a ton of hot glue. And what I found was that um, I have I have hanging on my wall, I think, for, for 24 um, of my layouts at a time. And I find I would be sitting here scrapping and all of a sudden, boom, something would hit the, hit the desk. And uh, the stuff that I had hot glued on it would be raining down because it doesn't hold for very long. The gel medium holds like crazy. 
and it will hold your metal embellishments, it will hold your flowers, it will hold everything. Um, the only thing that it doesn't give you is it's not, it doesn't have that satisfying instant hold that hot glue does, but it is going to last you much longer and you're not going to have things falling off all over the place. All right, I might need that later, so I will keep that out. It's ridiculous. I have, I think my big desk is six feet and on the side, I think I have another, another six feet of desk and I still do not have enough space for everything, which is why I usually end up with a mountain of supplies when I scrap. I need like tiered drying racks here. Oh, just stuck my thumb in it again. Which is why I have the perennial supply of wet things. All right. So since I stuck my thumb in it, I know that the Dazzlers is still a little bit wet. And uh, so I'm just going to blast that with the heat gun. Now the next step for the Dazzlers, I mentioned, and the contrast isn't too bad, but I mentioned that they, this blue is a lot uh, more vibrant than the red. And so I had wanted to tone it down a little bit. So the next step after I heat set it is I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker blue paint and I'm gonna add um, blue flame silks. Now what I was thinking of earlier today was that I could just have easily have mixed the two together and either mix them fully to get a slighter, slightly darker blue, or I could have um, left a little bit of, mar of a marbled effect. And I think that would have been really nice, uh, but I didn't want to switch things up on you guys tonight. I wanted to keep it true to what I had done the first time, but I mix my paints all the time. And as long as they're the same type of paint, you know, you're mixing an acrylic with an acrylic or a watercolor with a watercolor, you're laughing. Um, I mix my Dazzlers together uh, to, before they had uh, the most recent releases where they have a nice blue-green. I used to mix my yellows and, and uh, blues together all the time to get a custom green. I mix my, mix my mists together. You know, it's a, it's a good way to um, stretch what you have. And there's no reason that you can't mix paints from different manufacturers together. I mean, try a little bit first, but if they are the same type of paint, you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever. So I don't want this to bubble really, so I'm going to keep moving my paper around, moving my heat gun around. But if you like bubbles, you can hold this in one place. I'll where can I do it? That won't be that nice, but I'll do it on one of the ones over here. It's, it might, it might still bubble up, it might be a bit too dry at this point. But you can really get this to bubble and get oh here one's blowing can you see those ones are blowing up into into um, bubbles big bubbles and then they kind of deflate and they add some texture so you can get some cool effects from from your heat gun with these but if you don't want them then you need to keep things moving so that you don't end up with those little um, little bubbles or, or little wrinkles always need more room oh my goodness my husband and I share our downstairs office and it's a pretty big room and you think that we would have enough space. Um, but I keep trying to convince him that he really doesn't do anything aside from, from process bills and that I should be able to take over most of his side of the office, but he's not going for it. And uh, even though I think I have a very fairly sizable part of the room, there is just not enough space for anything. And, you know, God forbid I just stop buying things and, and then not have to worry because every new release that comes out, I want something, something new. Right now I'm coveting uh, the 13 out Arts Splat ink and the new Textures and Dazzlers from Shimmers. I'm going to have to put in a big order for those. So please, if you are shopping after the show or if you are shopping now, please leave me some. And then I have the Julie Nutting dollhouses on my wish list because, you know, if you're a mom of all boys, the only girly you get is the girly you get for yourself. So I like to make the dolls and play with the dolls. 
All right, this is not perfect, but it is dry enough to just be a little bit tacky. So we are going to move on because we are running out of time. All right. So silks, blue flame, gorgeous blue color. And I am just going to really roughly add some dark blue to my bubbles. Yeah, see that one is not dry and that does not matter. And again, don't worry too much about how it looks. This is part of your background. It is all going to blend together and it is not going to be a big thing. You're just wanting to add some more interest in shading. I'm hoping no one has anywhere pressing to be because we're going to run a little bit over. Um, I know Jen wants to get to bed. It's her bedtime. But for the rest of you, hopefully you can bear with me. We're going we're gonna to wrap up fairly quickly. Just in time now that my dog has fallen asleep and being quiet. Did you guys all see those gorgeous memory box dies that got loaded in the store today? Speaking of things I'm coveting, uh, the beautiful, I think it was called the Believe Snowflake with the trailing snowflakes from the bow is just amazing. And, uh, you know, talking about what's old is new again. I have a big shot. I use it off and on, but I have been falling back in love with it recently and using it a lot. So uh, if there are any of those left, I might have to pick some of them up. There's also an amazing, amazing cobweb dye for Halloween from Memory Box that I added to my wish list today. I just need somebody who's going to uh, monitor the store for me every day and tell me what's been loaded because I spend so much time combing through to see what's new that I absolutely need. That's good enough. Throw the paintbrush in the water where it's going to sit for the next week. All right, I'm just going to put that away for a sec. Here are the little die cut pieces that I cut earlier, and I will put some of those together while we wait. So I, I'm not going to use the gel medium on my picture. I don't know whether you can or not, and this is not the time that I want to discover that I can't. But I am going to use it to adhere these little flowers just randomly on my circles. And again, I am not super concerned about having too much, but I am concerned that I don't want it to be... Um, sticking up and textured. So I am smoothing it down so that I don't end up with this big clear blob. Stick those back 
work aside for now. And then for the photo corners, um, I'm just going to use this. I think it's called Be, Be Creative Tape. It's much like the uh, terrific tacky tape that I think we have in the store. This is a photo from uh, pre-kids when my husband and I were in Edinburgh, which is one of my absolute favorite places in the whole wide world. And uh, I do find, when I'm working with color, finding pictures, especially the dark, deep, dark, jewel tone type of colors, I find finding photos to coordinate is more difficult. If you can do a black and white, that's great. Um, but uh, this is the one that I chose to go with and it works because all the green in the photo is complementary to the red and then I'm going to add in some pops of yellow and so the yellow, the little yellow bit on my purse coordinates the picture to the layout. So I'll throw on the photo corners and we might as well just mount this, mount this picture at the same time and so for that I'm just going to use some of the blue damask paper I don't know about you guys I am I hate to cut into a brand new piece of paper it makes me nuts um, to cut into a 12 by 12 sheet because you never know there might be a layout that I want to use it for even though I have more paper than I can conceivably use in a lifetime. So uh, I like to uh, already have some sheets that are cut into when I start a layout because then I don't feel bad about cutting into them further. But the idea of using my my pristine 12 by 12 paper is too much for me. I have to use the one that I've already cut into. Just one of my many neuroses. All right. So the blue damask. And I don't know, I go back and forth between matting my photos or not. I tend to like to mat them because I find it helps them stand out a little bit while also kind of helping them to tie in. It's strange as that sounds. So I'm going to throw that on there. And I know I want it to be raised, so I'm just going to throw some cardboard strips underneath. I have foam tape. I use foam tape, but I would rather use cardboard for my picture because I like it to be fully supported underneath rather than sagging in places. All right, so the photo is done. Now I have, I should have, I haven't dropped them on the floor, I have some pre-cut blue strips. Nope, I think I've dropped them. All right, never mind, I will cut some new blue strips because I have lost them. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple half inch strips. It can be whatever size you want. It does not have to be perfect. And I want to lay these down behind where my photo is going to be. And because I'm going to have photo mat, I'm not going to worry about putting them all the way across. I'm just going to, or my cluster I guess is going to be in the middle, I'm just going to put them so that they protrude on either side.
It's always shocking to me at the end of the day that I'm not stuck to half of the stuff on my table, but there you have it. Even my scissors are all creative memory scissors. I have about 12 sets of them and I think that they're gonna last me till the end of time. All right, so we talked about adding a pop of yellow. And really when you're adding an accent color, you don't want it to be overwhelming. You want it to be just like I said, you want it to be a pop of color. And so I'm going to endeavor to do this without spraying everything on my tabletop. I will stick my picture upside down because I usually end up spraying all over those. And I'm actually going to mist in a box. Now, boxes are great for misting in if you aren't already in the habit, but word to the wise, eventually it soaks through and if you missed on your lap, like I do, because my table is always so full of stuff, you will get missed all over your pants. So you want to be sure that either it's not going to soak through or that you have something on the other side that is gonna prevent you from misting all over your pants. All right, these are canvas resist sheets by Prima. I absolutely love them along with the um, self-adhesive canvas border strips from Prima. They are such a great way to add a little bit of visual interest quickly and uh, easily. Um, you know, you can, you can achieve somewhat of the same um, effect that with the resist at least if you are using embossing powder, but that adds a whole nother step. I, so I really like the canvas and I'm going to use, um, one of the Prima vellum flowers. And I don't think we have these ones in the store at the moment, but we do have some other ones. Um, possibly this set. So they are lovely. They are designed to be misted and colored. And I'm going to use uh, my 13 Arts chalk inks. I'm using chalk yellow lemon and chalk yellow amber. I talked earlier about mixing mists. Um, I love to mix my 13 Arts mists. They combine so nicely and uh, they also combine well with the 13 Arts uh, water inks. So um, I have all sorts of mini misters and empty mist bottles that I've made custom concoctions of the 13 Arts mists and water inks and put them in. So one thing to be aware of with the vellum flowers is if you heat set them, the vellum is going to curl. And in my case, I didn't mind that. I like them looking a little bit messy and crimpy. But if it's something that's really going to concern you, then you will want to let it air dry instead. And while you're doing it, I don't want it to dry flat. Um, and so I'm going to perk the petals up. A little bit and uh, that's gonna give me give me some volume and some definition but you can see already how the petals are are curling in and so I'm just gonna hit it a little bit I'll move on to the resist strips and then I'll go back to it rather than than keeping my heat gun out on it and, and having it just completely disintegrate on me And if the little touches of white that are showing bother you, again, you could go back and mist again. Um, I really like kind of the ragged, multicolored effect. So I'm just going to leave it. And I'm not even going to dry it all the way tonight. 
I'm just going to leave it as is um, because the bottom is dry and that's where I'm going to place my glue. Um, but my canvas strips, I do want them completely dry because if they're wet, then they are not going to adhere to my page. I'm going to have quite the cleanup job on the uh, floor behind me afterwards. All right, so the canvas strips again, just pull out your gel medium. I've got my hot glue plugged in uh, to adhere all the elements just so that we can get out of here at a reasonable time. I say that, but I'm on the west coast and it's only seven o'clock here, so it's it's a very reasonable time for me still. And my boys are all, all out bowling, so I'm good for a little bit. All right, so in addition to that, I just wanted to add a little bit of texture to the background. So um, we have May Arts paper cord in the store. Lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, it comes in a multitude of colors. Um, I bought some in turquoise. And again, I'm just going to, whoop, and I'm not going to worry about that because it dries clear. And again, no point worrying about spilt milk. So I'm just going to stick this down. And another little bit on the other side. The stuff is ridiculously inexpensive. And uh, for tags and whatnot, it's just, it, it kind of just adds that little extra dimension um, yeah, for very little expense. I think it's 15 cents a yard normally. And so you guys are getting it um, at a reduced rate this week. All right, so there's that. Then I'm just following along with my list to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, so I'm going to adhere my circles next. So what I want to do is I want to kind of figure out where my photo is going to go so that I can then arrange my circles around it. Um, so there's the photo and I'm going to start with my biggest circles first. And again, I'm just going to adhere them using gel medium. And I'm going to be careful not to get gel medium all over my photo. I often have to print duplicates or um, put my photo in a Ziploc bag so that I can position it and I am not worried about um, getting stuff all over it. So here's one of the good things about the gel medium. I'm looking at my sample layout and I think, oh wait, I didn't actually put that big circle down first. I put a smaller circle underneath it. Well, the gel medium, because it does not adhere right away, I can pick it up. I can move that small circle into place and I can smush everything back down and we are off to the races. Sorry, I talked to myself. <laughs> So there we have those guys. Sorry, now it's getting to the concentrating part. Where mostly I'm just trying to concentrate on not putting my mucky fingers on my picture. Easy way to solve that one. All right. 
we are almost there guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. See, I told you, slow scrapper. Although I think the first time this took me two nights to do, so I'm gonna do it in just over an hour. That's fast by my standards. All right, so that is the circles. And now we are just going to adhere the photo and we're going to embellish. And the gel medium, it will stick to um, the textured background as well. You don't have to worry about it not, not sticking if it's not on the paper. It just won't lie flat. Oh, the kids are home and the dog knows it. All right, so the next step is we are going to adhere the photo and then we're gonna build the cluster around it. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use hot glue here. There we go. And then, oh, my kids are home. My little die cut girl is going to sit up here and uh, where did I put my flowers? Right there. All right. So my kids are home and they're not happy. <laughs> okay, so. I am going to lay these down, keeping in mind that I'm going to mount my little girl on here. And I'm going to actually use my embellishments to hold her up a little bit. I'll put some foam tape behind her as well, but I'm going to use the embellishments as well, because why not? Stick my yellow flower there. Um, the red ones, they're the Petaloo Botanicas. I love 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 them um i think i have them in nearly every color and uh they're amazing uh another thing i'm using is these prima tassels i think at this point when i checked um in the store on the weekend we are down to uh just the dark ones but they are just gorgeous on tags and whatnot for adding a little bit of um kind of interest up at the top of your tag, at the top part of your tag. So I'm sticking that in there. Some little uh, mini botanicas. I love, I don't know what, it's almost like a fabric-y type of paper that Petaloo has used for these, but I just absolutely love the feeling of them. So I'm gonna stick one of those there. And where's my girl? Okay. So she is going to go there. I, I'm just going to put some glue where I'm hoping she's going to hit a flower right now and uh, I will come back afterwards and add some pop pots. But in the meantime we'll get her, get her sitting pretty and I'm just following, um, I had the choice of two lines, either the line of the railing or I just used the line of the wall uh, in my photo. And more petaloo flowers, one over on this side. And a couple of these gorgeous uh, new Prima ones. I could not believe with the new Prima flowers that they came out with what amazingly big packs they are. Um, back to, almost back to the day when used to buy your Prima flowers in jars. Do you guys remember that? Uh, you know, it's kind of back to that that uh, number of flowers in a case, which is nice, because I always find that uh, I get through a case of flower or through a package of flowers so quickly that it's nice to have something that's gonna go a long way. So love these with their little brown centers. And 
think the last thing I'm putting on, and this again, I would use gel medium for, but for the sake of expediency, I'm going to use hot glue tonight. Um, but it's just one of the Prima resins that says memories. And stick that there. And there we go. All done. So not bad. Looks pretty close to the original. Oh, I know what I forgot. I forgot to mount it on my striped paper. So the last step, I won't make you guys sit through it, but is to mount it on your background paper. And uh, that just finishes everything off nicely. So there it is. And just bear with me for a second. I'm going to switch the cameras around.